So let us go through this lab instruction. So we have created the cube context. We saw the get nodes, get pod, net pools, node class, and we also see certain configuration. Now we will go to the next section, which is the compute cluster capability. Within that, let us go through the inbuilt pool, node pools. Let us deploy this um, simple application using the built-in node pools. Okay. So here um, I did not select any specific uh, node selector for the system or the uh, general purpose. Instead, I just using the compute type auto. Okay, that means uh, I wanted to use the default built-in node pools, and I wanted to use the e case auto mode nodes. Okay, so this is what uh, I have defined here, and if I deploy this workload, okay, so it's already deployed. Now let me see the events in the Kubernetes side to see what is happening behind the scene. So you can see various events with respect to the Carpenter node pool activity. So there is a node claim created and these are the pods which are getting in the pending state and this is the container and this node claim state will be reconciled and then you will also see the nodes coming out of that. Okay, so now if I look at uh, get nodes, so I see uh, a new node, okay, which is uh, created a few minutes back. It's in the ready state, okay. These three nodes were created during the cluster creation, but this one is created just now on the fly uh, because of the spending parts. Now, if I see the get pod, I should be able to see the three inflate pods are in the running state, okay. So let me do get pod. And these parts are running the default namespace, so they are in the running state. Now I will go ahead and uh, delete this deployment. Okay, so if I go ahead and delete this, so the deployment is deleted. Now, if I look at the Kubernetes uh, events, now I should be able to see some activity around this because now the Pods are no longer required, uh, so the node claim also will be uh, deleting. Okay, so that means the node will be deleted eventually. The pods are getting uh, terminated. So if I see a uh, get pod, for example, you will see the pods are not no longer running. And if you see the get nodes, the node which was created a while ago uh, will be deleted eventually. Okay, so let us wait for some more time. Because we mentioned uh, the empty or underutilized uh, uh, 30 seconds, so it has to wait for 30 seconds after the node is empty. So you see that uh, the newly created node is now uh, not ready; it will be uh, deleted eventually. So that's what. So the dy dynamically scaling is happening now, whenever the workloads are getting created or destroyed. In this section, let us see how to create a custom node pool. Okay. So here I am defining a node class team A and this is the same I am role and in, in this case I am using SNAT as disabled. The random is the default one. I am using SNAT as disabled. We will discuss this later. Network policy in, uh, events log is enabled. It was disabled by default. I am enabling it. And the subnets I am using is different. Okay. If you look at C5, 0F and any it. Okay. Let us go to the VPC. So here these are the secondary subnets, okay, C5, 0F, and N8, uh, 9, 8, right? So earlier in the default uh, node pool, when we create the cluster, we gave this uh, node pools, the data plane, 1A, 1B, 1C. So these are the last 24 subnets. But if the customers do not have enough IPC here, instead if they want to use additional siders, we can leverage this secondary sider. So that is the intention, okay? So the, sub, the security group is same cluster security group that is the default one. So I did not change that. So network policy default allow and these are the ephemeral storage. Okay, so let me go ahead and create this uh, node class. So it is created. Then um, I will go ahead and create the node pool. So in the node pool, I'm using this particular 
team a node class okay i'm referencing this apart from that i'm also creating this in the spot okay the default one is on demand i'm using spot for testing purpose so i'll go ahead and create uh, this node pool as well now i'll go ahead and uh, create a application so in the inflate application so i'm changing the node selector to this node pool because i don't want to use the default one okay the default is general purpose or system but i wanted to use a custom one the remaining fields are same the auto uh, is same like we saw earlier now let me go ahead and deploy this deploy it okay now let us see the pods are in uh, pending state okay I'll see in the default uh, uh, namespace it's in the container uh, container creating state so it looks like a node has been created so let us see the get node uh, command so I see a new node is getting created okay so just five seconds back so just to confirm what is happening is I will run uh, get node class first okay so in the get node class i will see a team a and default one and in the get node pool so if i run the get node pool i'll see a uh, team a also so I, there are two nodes created okay so one of the node is hosting our inflate pods okay so just to see what is happening in the background so if you see get node events so you can see that uh, the team A node pool is created and there is a node claim all object, all object is also created for this and you can see all the status events okay um, based upon the workload that we deployed. So let us also look at uh, the node claim object that is also created which is used to manage the lifecycle of the ECT nodes in the cloud provider. So, so let us take uh, one of the node claim object kubectl get node claim let me select the right one so let us take uh, for example this one okay Node claim iPhone OEML. So you can see that the status object contains all the information. So this is allocatable uh, CPU memory, yes, no, how many CPUs, the condition, okay, and these are the various instant types available for this particular constraints, and this is a specification that we define. Okay, and these are the set of labels. Okay, now let us look at our pods or pe uh, pending state uh, are already running on this right so this is how you can create a custom node pool and the node class and deploy the applications using the node selector in amazon eks auto mode